what happens in one part of the country or even across borders can impact you and you may not even be aware of the dangers. We're talking about the health effects of fire and smoke and particulates in general that can enter your lungs. Air quality. To discuss this topic, I welcome Dr. Gavin McGregor Skinner, Senior Director of GBAC. Gavin, hello. Hey, Jeff, what a week it's been this week. Every week is a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get right into this topic. Everyone's busy. Provide us some great information. What do we need to know about the effects of smoke in our lungs, on our health, and so on? Well, Jeff, we know that the outdoor uh, air quality um, impacts indoor air quality. We know that air pollution uh, is a big issue for the health of people and animals. And we've really seen this week that air pollution in, across the eastern states of the U United States uh, has been really significant because of smoke coming from forest fires in Canada. And what's really has been really confusing this uh, this week, Jeff, is what do those numbers mean that everyone talks about? Tell us about the numbers. What do we need to know about measuring and what's going on in the air? Well, it's really interesting, Jeff, with those fire those wildfires in Canada, and we have seen so much smoke come down the east coast that we have seen towns cities break records when it comes to outdoor air quality and what i want to emphasize today is that there are now ways that anyone people citizens can just engage in air quality monitoring technology it's accurate it's accessible it's affordable and we want more and more people through uh, ISSA, uh, the, the World Trade Association for the Clean Industry, as well as other associations, to truly join forces here and engage more people at the local level for monitoring air quality in their local neighbourhood. And so what I wanted to show you, Jeff, is that these are low-cost devices. So I wanted to start today with, uh, again, this is, I'll just call this photo number one. And this photo came from a very good friend of mine. Um, on, it's her name, Sandy Brown. She lives in Arlington, Virginia. And this photo was taken on June 8th. And it showed that the outdoor air was impacting her indoor air quality. And the, the reading she got in her air quality monitor was 72%. Now, at that stage, we knew that the, the government, both at local, state, federal, were saying, stay inside. And But at her house, she was opening the door very, for very brief moments to let her two dogs out during the day. But it dropped down to 72%. And a lot of people don't understand that when you see percentage drops like that, what do you do about it? So let's look at the next photo, Jeff. And the next photo was a photo that Sandy Brown sent to me today, which shows that her indoor air quality monitor in her house on Saturday, June the 9th, is back to 100% air quality. And she said that this is what it, it looks like, Gavin, normally, except when I'm cooking, it might change a little bit, but it never gets to 72%. But also look at this photo that Sandy sent me this morning. Look at the particles on the surface. So we know, Jeff, that air quality affects surfaces. And so you know, dirty air leads to dirty surfaces and people don't think like that. And so it's really important that, again, these monitors, uh, available, they're affordable, uh, and people can be using them, but there's also it needs to be a means to report these numbers. Now, if we look at the next photo, photo number three, and this, oh, this, is, this photo was taken on June 8th, which was Thursday this week, from Scott Vogel. Now, many of us will know Scott. Um, he's the Chief Operations Officer at a, at a company called Emergy Clean that specializes in the cleanup of emergencies, disasters, crime, and accidents. Now, Scott took measurements where he lives in Flemington, New Jersey, and he used a particle counter. And in this photo, you see a photo of two particle counters side by side. Now, in this photo, the outdoor particle counter is on the left. On the right is the indoor particle counter. Now, have a look at those numbers. So the alerts that we get, the official alerts we get, um, are measuring particles at about 2.5 microns, but Scott's particle um, counters go all the way down to 0.3 microns. Why is 0.3 microns important? Because the 0.3 microns, when you breathe them in, they get through the upper respiratory tract right down into the lower respiratory tract, and that's where they'll do the most damage. So if you look at on the left here, Scott's 0.3 microns was measured 
And this is just a number, 154,848. If you look at what his indoor air was, which was normal for him, it's 1,489. Anyone can buy these particle counters, Jeff. And so we want to see more of our cleaning professionals and more of the public becoming involved in getting the tools that are available to measure air quality. But what is air quality? And so what we've seen in the last week with these forest fires up in Quebec, Canada, the air coming down. You know, who would have thought that I would wake up Wednesday morning, Jeff, and go, wow, the air I'm breathing today has come from Canada? Because you don't know that. But I do because it was Washington, D.C. was just full of smoke. Let's look at this next photo, photo number four. And it shows the outdoor air quality index chart, which, again, many people are familiar with because you've seen it on the news this week. Now, the problem with this chart is it has six different colors and not everyone understands what the six different colors are because you know jeff when i do my risk assessments and i i work on the traffic light system i use red yellow green but now we have a the u.s air quality index chart with six different colors and we saw for the very first time in many places this 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 purple colored right down the bottom here hazardous and what that means the health recommendation is the general public at high risk of experiencing strong irritations and adverse health effects should avoid outdoor activities. And what we saw throughout the East Coast of the US this week, we saw schools announcing there will be no outdoor activities. We saw the Washington DC Zoo and many other zoos pull their animals inside, which is not where those animals want to be. And the zoos were shut this week. We saw many other professional sporting bodies, the baseball, was cancelled this week because of the outdoor air quality. But also on this photo here, photo number four, Jeff, it shows particular matter. And you can see here 2.5 microns. You can see the, the measurements, go back to the, the, the previous photo, the measurements that Scott had were way higher than what is, is, is recommended or what is recommended you know, at the different levels for safety. So we were way above healthy uh, indoor, uh, sorry, healthy outdoor air this week. So I wanted to show you what happens. So when the official bodies that report on outdoor air quality, they take these, they use the air quality index, or index chart, and then they make a map. Now, photo number five is where we're using the air quality index chart that issued by the Weather Authority that made this map using the colors associated with the air quality index. And you can see here, we've got those dark purples, the lighter purples, the reds, the oranges, the yellows, and the greens over a wide area of the East Coast. But that's at a very high level, and it doesn't get down to the neighborhood level. So what we want to emphasize here, Jeff, is that this is an opportunity right now where people can go out and buy in um, air quality monitors. They can buy particle um, counters, and they can be part of this whole network of what we call citizen science to report numbers at the hyper local level that's the neighborhood level so that people have real numbers not just again it was a bad week in new york because we can have a look at the you know, this is june 6 on this map if we look at the next photo jeff new york city this is on uh this is wednesday june 7th again the weather authority stated that new york city on wednesday june the 7th had the worst air quality on record with an air quality index score of 413. This is an index, Jeff, that only goes up to 500. So you're, you're 22, 25 times above what the World Health Organization says is safe, breathable, healthy air for outdoors. And we know that outdoor air influences indoor air. So again, these numbers got posted. I'm not really sure how much the public understood what those numbers signify, but more importantly, what the, what the numbers are telling you to do. What are the actionable items? What should you do when you see numbers like this or when you see colors like this on a map? One of the things that we're very fortunate with, Jeff, is that uh, people have still have masks from the, the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. And again, a lot of them were wearing those masks. But again, a lot of people that I've spoken to, Jeff, this week didn't know when to, and when and how to well, when to wear those masks, but also they didn't understand how protective some of the masks they had, and there's a whole variety of them, were against smoke, but more importantly, this high number of particles in the air. 
Yeah, that was one of my questions, Gavin, was, is it time to mask up again because of the air quality? So from what you've said and described, and thank you for the photos, those are great. First of all, we need to know what the air quality is. We need to monitor it. We need to either stay indoors or get to clean air or have systems in our homes or offices to clean the air and maybe wear a mask. Yeah, we need data, Jeff. We really yeah. need data. And um, as you know, air quality monitoring technologies become more accurate, accessible, affordable, um, more and more people are becoming what I would call citizen sciences, scientists for better air quality in their local neighborhoods. Um, again, we know that more data is needed, but the U.S. government has a website, Jeff, called citizenscience.gov. And on this website is a toolbox on how citizen science can measure air quality. You can just download that for free. Now, another government agency, the United States Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA, has an air sensor toolbox on their website, which is available for free to anyone to download and participate. So it's really important, Jeff, that we understand that air pollution, air pollutants, smoke from wildfires is unhealthy. We know that there are low cost measuring devices that can measure particulate matter or particles um, in the air at 10 microns, 2.5 microns, one micron, even down to 0.3 microns. We know those 0.3 microns when you breathe them in, get right down into your lungs. And we know these indoor, these, these air quality monitors can also do carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, volatile organic compounds. But more importantly, Jeff, it's education and awareness, training through ISSA courses and other associations to ensure that both cleaning professionals and the general public can interpret what those numbers mean and then can go and do something that improves actionable items based on what the data they're receiving. And I think there's a big gap for that right now. Yeah. Well, thanks for the update, Gavin. Appreciate your time. And we'll keep an eye on this moving forward. Uh, we're just at the start of summer, so we're going to see more air pollution issues from now um, for, for a number of months, Jeff. So it's a really important issue for us to cover.